Game of Thrones is returning for its eighth and final season coming up next weekend. So I wanted to make this video about my top six most frustratingly awesome moments in the show so far. Roll that intro. <laughs> Let me start off by saying if you're not like me who's been watching the show since halfway through season one, I know, I'm pretty cool. You should definitely get caught up because even myself, I've forgotten a lot of the things that happened. So yesterday I shared a video that I believe is the best way to catch up in about 16 minutes. You can watch it so quickly and I advise you guys to go do that because this is going to be full of spoilers and just to brush up before this next season starts because you might not have time to binge watch 160 hours of Game of Thrones by Sunday. So down in the comments below will be the 16 minute video that I watched to prepare for this season and also the 52 minute video that I needlessly watched to prepare for this season. I believe both videos are good. They both offer a different uh, kind of roundup of them. If you want to watch both like I did, I mean, it might help you out, but I'm not sure. And this is going to contain obviously major spoilers. So if you aren't caught up, then I don't know why you even want to watch this. And I'm not sure you're interested in the show if you've never watched it before throughout the seven seasons spanning over eight years there have been awesome moments and there have been frustrating moments and in between that line is those frustratingly awesome moments and that's what i wanted to make the video on today and why six of them well i didn't want to eliminate any more and it's my video i can do whatever i want starting with that number six is the lion and the rose otherwise known as the purple wedding episode and this is where joffrey finally meets its end and I know you're thinking, but that was awesome. I loved seeing him die because he was possibly the worst character in television history. And I agree with you. The only thing is that that episode, when he dies, you just don't, I personally, this is again, my personal list. You just don't feel that like redemption. I wanted him to just be cut up <laughs> and it sounds sadistic, but all the torture he bestowed on people to have him go out choking on his own breath was satisfying, but it was also frustrating at the same time because you knew that immediately Tyrion and Sansa were going to get blamed. And of course they did. They wound up getting out of it. And the uh, latter half of that will be discussed later on. And that's not the only wedding to make an appearance on this list. If you haven't guessed already, but yeah, the purple wedding that episode watching him die. I just kind of went, really? That's how he goes out choking like a bitch oh someone just go over there and stab him real quick that's what the show's turned me into that's what the show's turned all of us into joffrey got a good joffrey could have had a better death and i wish he did moving on to the five most frustratingly awesome moment was the season finale that just was watching one of the dragons be killed by the night king i immediately knew that dragon's gonna come back as a nice dragon and that really sucks and i was right ice king resurrected him and now he has an ice dragon, which is just terrible. That's just, that's, it's terrible, terribly awesome. It was cool watching him resurrected and it's embodies what this list just all is all about. <laughs> At one end, if you're rooting for the good guys, quote unquote, good guys in this show, or you're rooting for the Night King, either way, having an ice dragon is pretty badass. And I hope in this upcoming season that those two dragons fight because that just, I mean, that's going to be awesome. Fire and ice, the song of fire and ice. It all comes, maybe this should have been higher on the list now. Either way, the penultimate episode of this last previous season was where that happened. If you want to go check that episode out, there's a theme that usually all the second to last episodes of the show are always when all the craziness happens. Um, then they save the season finale for like just something a little bit less of what just happened. But regardless, yeah, that watching the nice dragon just demolish the wall was great. And I can't wait to see what happens with that guy. At number four, do you remember the summer of 2015 where everyone was wondering if Jon Snow was actually dead or not? That was a gigantic thing. Everywhere you went online, people were just speculating if he died or not, if he was really going to stay dead. The thing about the show that really gets me is that like every bad thing that happens, you can kind of look around and you can understand why something bad is happening other than like people being tortured <laughs> and murdered. But there's always some sort of reason for it. And. Jon Snow being stabbed to death by his former men is symbolic of the fact they just didn't trust the Wildlings, and he wanted to bring them in and to help, which makes sense. So when he stabbed and killed finally by his little friend, Otto, Ollie, is it Ollie? So just when you think that the show is really focusing on him and he's stabbed to death and you're like, 
well, this sucks. <laughs> and then he, uh, the actor Kit Harrington shaved his beard, and everyone went and freaked out about it. It was just, it was just a fun time for speculation on the internet. That's one of the best parts about watching a show when it's when it's currently running. For one, there's no real spoilers. You're watching it with everyone else, and you don't know what's happening. People were offering him like a million dollars for him to tell them if he was coming back or not. It was wild. For that, it earns the number four spot on my list. Now, number three. Way back when I first was going to watch this show, admittedly, I wasn't really into it. Uh, I do like fantasy and all that. I love the Lord of the Rings, but just I'm not a big shows guy. I don't really watch a ton of shows. So when my friends wanted me to watch it, I was like, eh, I don't know. And they're like, well, wait, it's got boobs and sex and murder. And I'm like, yeah, but I've seen that all before on TV shows like Spartacus and all that. It, it's all right. I guess I'll check it out. So the first couple episodes went by and I was watching and I really loved Sean Bean. So I was like, okay, this show has some potential. The first season, if you were catching up recently or if you've just gone back and rewatched it for some reason, the first season is really a slog. There's so many characters that they introduce, so many things going on. So it's really hard to get yourself like, you know, adjusted to all the new characters that they introduce and all their stories. Towards the end of the first season, when they were going to behead Ned Stark, I'm thinking, well, something's going to happen because he's like the big name of the show. They're not just going to kill him. And then they did. And that was the moment when I went, wow, this show isn't fucking around, <laughs> apparently. Um, that kind of hooked me right there. From the moment that they actually cut his head off, I thought, wow, they, uh, they're just, they're just going to kill anybody now? Little did I know that it would get ten times worse to the point where you just stopped caring about people. Because you're like, I'm, I'm not going to start investing my time and energy into that character because they're just going to die next week. This one pulled the trickster moment of the millennium. The only thing I regret is that I didn't make content videos back then because I was told to watch this episode by myself. Uh, I did, and I wish I just recorded my my honest reaction to it. I know there's some people, if you just do a quick YouTube search, you can YouTube people watching this episode titled The Reigns of Castamere, which nobody calls it that. Everyone knows it by The Red Wedding. Yes, this episode is one of the worst episodes to watch because it just completely rips your guts out. It's uh, frustratingly awesome because everyone dies. Um, <laughs> it got a lot of flack because uh, they stabbed a pregnant woman in her stomach, which is just, wow, that visual really messes with you. Um, but the whole show pretty much turns at this point because everything's kind of going high. You're cheering for Rob Stark. Um, he's building his army. He's beating the Lannisters. And you're like, all right, he's going to win. And then it just pulls the betrayal of the sentry. And everyone gets their throats cut or stabbed to death. And it's just, oh, man. I I was actually, when I was watching it, I had a fear that someone was going to come up behind me and cut my throat, too. It just, the show changed after that. It changes you as a person watching that. Um, and I'm sure that if you stuck in with the show, if you were somewhat into it, on that episode, that's when you just completely became a fan, a lifetime fan like me. Now you're thinking, what the hell could possibly top the Red Wedding. I mean, that's one of the most revered episodes and moments in the show. And it should be number one, rightfully. And to be honest, it is probably the bigger moment to most people if you were to pull them. To me, it wasn't, though. To me, the episode The Mountain and the Viper is the number one most frustratingly awesome moment. And I will explain. Um, there's a thing that happens in shows when you're watching them and shows like this anyway, where anything can happen at any moment. But by human nature, you want the good guys to win. That's always what you want to happen. You want your side of that you're rooting for to prevail. And you're thinking, okay, going into the ep going into every episode from here on out, I know that something's not nothing's going to go the way you want it to go. Uh, recently, Sophie Turner and Maïs Williams said that the ending will make some people happy and some people mad. So I have a feeling that I personally will be happy, but the general mass will be mad about this. And this all stems from what I believe is the most what the fucking uh, frustratingly awesome moment is the mountain versus the viper. The viper's winning. He's beating him. You raped her. You murdered her. He's avenging his murdered and raped sister by the man who did it. And you get lulled into this false sense of security by this moment. And I'm thinking, oh, God, he's going to win. And Tyrion's going to go free. And it's all going to be peaches and roses and everything will happen out. And then he gets his face skull. Just, just, just completely crushed and mutilated. And it's one of those moments where 
I think that show actually broke me because uh, I got a headache. I actually had an, a headache from watching it. As soon as the credits rolled, I shut my TV off and I went, what the fuck, man? It got me again. <laughs> Every time I like put my trust into the show, it just breaks my heart. And oh my God, it's one of the few moments in like TV, like TV or any sort of media history where I just completely was bamboozled, I was taken for a ride. And uh, for that, it's my top frustratingly awesome moments. Um, if you guys have any other moments that made you go, what the fuck? Please leave them down below the comment section. I will leave the link to both videos, the 16 minute one, which is a quick watch. And I believe that everybody, even if you just power, you know, powered through the show a year ago, you should probably watch that just to, you know, brush up on the Game of Thrones lore. And then the 52 minute episode, which I know 52 an hour, watching something for an hour, which is essentially the length of one episode. Um, they, they dive into it a little bit better, I believe, because they break down every season by the season so you really get a better picture of what was happening if you want to watch both i mean that just helps out even more like the video if you enjoyed this to see future content from me i hope you guys uh enjoy season eight i know i will i'll be watching along right with you guys i'm glad that game of thrones is ending it's gonna be sad to see it end because it's been pretty much a part of your life i mean anybody who's really into it it's been a it's almost been a third of my life i've dedicated to you know being interested in the show so Either way, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you in the next one. Peace. Hopefully, uh, no one that I really like dies, which will not be the case. Everyone's probably going to die. <laughs>